Okay, next game was the last round of the tournament, and this tournament has the best story. Okay, there was a guy you've never heard of, except probably uh, Chuck Edelman's heard of him, named Jerry Bibbled. Jerry Bibble will go to tournaments. Sometimes he directed. Sometimes he took pictures. And he was a very, very unusual guy. Very. Okay. And at some point in his life, he and Joel Benjamin's father got into some kind of argument. I don't know if it was in print or it was face to face, but they didn't like each other. As a consequence, Joel didn't like Jerry Bibbled because, you know, his dad didn't like him. Xenoid subscribed and Wes8118 gifted a sub. And they started the hype train. Thanks, guys. Okay. We need 32 subs to get to 1,000 again. Okay. So before the game, Jerry Bibble was at the tournament taking pictures of everybody. And Joel was at the board, and he was taking pictures, and Joel told him to go away. Jerry didn't go away. He just kept taking pictures. Joel Benjamin got up and yelled at him, and he was taking pictures while Joel was yelling at him. Then he took Bibbled and threw him to the ground, like the song. He, he threw Bibble to the ground. Bibble was like in his 60s. And I, I was like, I was beside myself, and I was already pretty big, so that's a lot. Anyway, so I left, and I went and I told whoever my wife was at that time, like what happened. Then I came back to the board, and Bibbled was gone, and I, I started playing Joel. And then this game which had all that, you know, all that brouhaha happened beforehand. This was on Joel's birthday. I've never had my opponent physically attack somebody during the game or before the game. Xenoid gifted a sub. Wow, thanks, Xenoid. Hooray. Yeah, maybe like playing Gallus, maybe Bibbled wrote something bad about Joel's father. I don't know. Joel's father and mother were both chess players. They were rated players. In fact, Joel's mother in the U.S. Open one year won a prize. I think $200 or something. Top under $1,200 or something like that. Okay, so here, here's my game with Joel. After he threw the guy to the ground. And Joel told me after the game he always loses on his birthday. So I was help, happy to help him out. Now, it's known that I always play queen c2 here, so I thought Joel would prepare for that. So I played bishop g5. I figured he wouldn't prepare for that because I don't play that very often. Okay, he played c5. d5, this is all theory. h6. Takes, takes. d6. e3. This was my prep. e5. Knight f3. And he played queen a5, which I hadn't prepared for. Okay, so I took the knight on f6. So I doubled his pawns, and he undoubled my pawns. Although he won a pawn. So now he's a pawn up, and the engine says white slightly better. Played bishop e2. Bishop f5. The engine doesn't like bishop f5. Castled. Knight a6. Played e4. He went back to d7. The engine says I'm plus one here. Rook b1. And he long castled. So black's a pawn ahead, and it's hard for white to break through. But the engine really likes white's position a lot. Thanks, Wes, for 100 bits. I attacked his queen. Engine move. Queen c1 is the engine move. Played rook a3. Queen b2, king b8 is the engine move, rook b1. The engine still likes white, of course, because potentially I have this big attack against his king. He played f5, and here I did something very nice. Um, I calculated rook b3 was good. I'm threatening a3, so he only has one move, bishop a4, and then I ignore it, and I play a3 anyway. Then he takes, and I can take either anything and I'm better. 
I took this. Now he plays bishop a4 and saves his bishop, which he didn't do because then I play b5 and I'm going to win his bishop anyway. And the engine says I'm up 1.2 here. So it likes white a lot. He took on b4 instead. Notice black still has all eight of his pawns. Then he took on e4. And I should play knight takes e4 and I have a big advantage. It says 1.4. But I made a mistake. I played queen a4. Now he has good drawing chances if he plays e3. e3 is the best move. And it says I'm better, but not winning. That was his last chance. He played a5. Now he's lost. Knight b3. He can't save his queenside pawns. King c7. So if I take with the knight, he plays rook a8. Rook c1, threatening c5. c5 I did play. Played queen a7. I played queen b5. That's the best move. Now he can resign because all my pieces are coming in his king. Played rook d8. Queen c4. So when I take, I'm doubled up on the c-file. c6, threatening c7. And he prevents it c7 in a very funny way. I'm not even sure if I saw this move because it's so strange. But I think I did. Anyway, he played king c7. It doesn't matter what he plays. That's a funny way to stop c7. Then I took with check. And he resigned here because if he plays king takes, queen c7 is mate. And if he doesn't play king takes, then he should resign because his rook's hanging. So that was a nice crushing win against Joel. And I've beaten Joel a couple times in U.S. championships. He's beaten me a couple times in U.S. championships. So it's all fair. And also it's all about the Benjamins. That was the last round of the tournament, so that was a good tournament for me. Let's see. Let's deny that because it's so stupid. And so forth. Gay, I've collected all the level one emotes. That was the goal of my life. Thanks for the train, guys. You guys are the best. Was the U.S. Championship weaker then? It was even stronger. Nakamura played in this U.S. Championship also. But Caruana, uh, I think, played for Italy. And Dominguez played for Cuba. So they didn't play. Although I'm not sure how good Caruana was in 2006. He was pretty good. But, you know, obviously I, I would have beaten him easily. That's correct, Pat. These were the strongest U.S. championships ever. That's why I won a lot of games. Very suspicious. What was I planning to play 18 years ago? I don't know. The engine says I should do something on the queen side and let him play EF2 check. Now, here's something funny that none of you noticed. This is the last move of the game where I took and he resigned. This position, I haven't taken any of his pawns. He still has all eight of his pawns. Then when I took one, then he resigned. So that makes sense. Even giving up one pawn was too much for him. Truth hurts. Somehow we have a lot of viewers, but I don't know why. Was there a year when you could beat Hikaru? No. Even before he was born, he would have beaten you. Truth hurts.